welcome to our living room. This is from the Disney couch. We're on a quest to find the ultimate Disney movie. So tonight, we're all wearing black because, yes, it's time for... The, the Black, black Cauldron. Cauldron. What do we know about The Black Cauldron, Mike? Very little. Uh, I think I'm the only person of our family who's ever seen it. And I saw it in the theater in 1985. You actually so, saw it. I did. I remember going to the theater and watching this movie, but I remember nothing at all about the movie itself. So that tells you how deep an impression it made on my young mind. But I'm still excited because I'm really curious about this one. I did not even know, I think, that this was a Disney movie till we looked at the list of Disney movies yeah. that we had to watch to find the ultimate Disney movie. And like most Disney movies, The Black Cauldron is based on a book, uh, which in turn is based on some Welsh legend. And so we're going back into medieval times, and some have turned The Black Cauldron the movie that almost killed Disney. Oh, ooh. It was the most expensive animated movie ever to produce. Ever. Ever. Some estimates gave it $44 million to make this film. And it opened in 1985 alongside a re-release of E.T. and Back to the Future, uh, so it didn't make much. In fact, it was outgrossed by the Care Bears movie in 1985. <laughs> so, kind of sad. And so this is actually the first Disney film to feature computer-generated animation. Oh, really? Yeah, so we'll have to watch for that. I guess it's in some bubbles and the cauldron itself and some other things. Yeah, I guess this is kind of the dawn of computer animation. It but is. Grab your giant bag of skills <laughs> and let's watch the black cauldron. expecting something a little more light-hearted than that. A yeah. little more along the lines of Sword in the Stone with yeah. silly squirrels. <laughs> so we've got the Fox and the Hound, and then this. The Black Cauldron was the first Disney movie to get a PG rating. Oh. Yeah, thanks to the boob jokes and <laughs> the army of the undead, I guess. <laughs> so. Uh, apparently they did a test screening of this movie and uh, children uh, ran from the theater in terror. And so they cut some of the battle sequences with the uh, zombie army taking over the world. Um, in doing that, I think they dissected the story a little bit. I don't think it's any wonder that this one has been quietly buried in the Disney vault, it, not to be resurrected again. We kept talking through the whole movie that it was basically Lord of the Rings yeah. in cartoon. Yeah. You know, you had like an evil, powerful, magical force that had to be destroyed, mm -hmm. and a dark, dead king who was after it, yep. and simple people from the Shire <laughs> who had to yep. protect it. Was it sent, was sent that way by a mysterious old man. Yeah, it was. It but was, most of all, the character Gurgi was yeah. basically a carbon copy of Smeagol. <laughs> he even talked the same. I don't he know if Andy Serkis, you know, watched this movie to get inspiration for Gollum. And then yeah. he opened his mouth, I'm like, what? And he said, master! Yeah. <laughs> crunches and crunches! <laughs> and there was even the scene right near the end where they're teetering on the cliff mm -hmm. above the cauldron. About so to fall in. Yeah, yeah, someone's gonna fall to their death to destroy all the power. Yep. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah. Think of Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. you know, in a cartoon, but not as great of acting. It definitely had the feeling that they were just trying to put every fantasy element <laughs> into this story and into this movie. It was pretty good. Like, all of this is kind of negative, but it wasn't bad. But I probably won't ever want to watch it again. Yeah, it, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't up to the standard of storytelling no. that we're used to with Disney. No. I think that's the part that really let me down. I had zero emotional investment with any of the characters. Yeah. When it's life or death stuff, I'm just like, huh, get on with it already. <laughs> You're gonna die anyway! Just jump in! <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, like, that really annoyed me. Like, the witches were like, oh, someone's gonna die to stop it. But then, like, they were all like, oh, all right, never mind then. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> oh, well. But, like, the fate of the world's at stake. Someone's gotta be self-sacrificial, but took till, like, 15 minutes later before they're like, oh, maybe one of us should jump in. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the soundtrack was lacking. I'm talking... Yeah. None of them broke into musical numbers because this story was just like too dark for that. Yeah, but, like, and this was the only Disney movie that had no songs. No. The background music I found was lacking like, in really no, intense moments where there should have been like, made up. intense okay. trumpets or something. There was nothing like yeah. when someone's about to jump into the black cauldron. There's lots like really quiet music in the background. Like what's that? What's that? Can I get some intensity? So one thing that I did like about this movie was the animation. You know, you could yeah. tell that they sunk 44 million into this baby because it looked really good. Yeah, but they have lots of nice light effects and cool lightning and glowing stuff and vapor and all these things that I'm sure were really difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And so it looked really good. There just wasn't much of a story for it to sit on top of. We all kind of felt like this was a not very Disney-esque movie, yeah. but I think it's going to score pretty well in the chart. Yep. To the chart! The kiss! Yeah. A very Yo, awful kiss. It was the most oh, awkward kiss in Disney history. Yeah. Yes. And, like, and Gollum's just like, <laughs> and they're like, mm. <laughs> 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 okay, let's go. That didn't happen. But do we count it as the kiss? I think yes. we do. Yeah. That moment, as awkward as it as it was, was the payoff that tells you that Pig Boy and Princess are gonna get together. And it was almost like. Disney knew that their movie needed to have the kiss in it, and yep. that's how yeah. they did it. Boy meets girl. They gotta kiss at some point. Yep. yep. Do it. No music in this one, <clears throat> other than the soundtrack, which was a little subpar. And no hit song either. No hit song. <clears throat> no. Although they did try to release the soundtrack, and uh, mm -hmm. it didn't really work. They didn't even hear the soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Witchy villain. <laughs> yes. 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 Time to call. Not only was there like that guy calling a upon like king. A demon or something. There was also three witches. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a solid check mark right there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who uses cauldrons anymore except for witchy things? Come on. <laughs> ugly villain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The horn yeah. king, I think, was definitely more scary than ugly. Well, he had red eyes and he was like basically a skeleton zombie. But like, yeah. if we didn't count him, we'd definitely count the witches. Yeah, the witches were ugly for sure. Rack up another point for the black cauldron yeah. for ugly villain. Death by falling. Well, Gorgi, he, well, he didn't no, fall. I he guess jumped. he didn't fall. Yeah. He yeah. And really, the Horn King, he died by getting his cape sucked into a cauldron. So. Yes. No cakes. No I death guess. by falling. <laughs> Alcohol. Yep. Yeah. There was the whole drunken orc drinking scene. Yep. It's very much alcohol. Missing parents. So, okay. So, what about Terran's backstory? Yeah. He is I... assistant pig keeper. Is the pig keeper's dad? I think I he's it. an orphan. Yeah. But they never said that. No. I think he was like a teenager, and you know, back in medieval times, teenagers like went that's off on true. their own all the time. Yeah, that's true. I think he was missing parents because he went off on his own without even telling his parents. Well, he doesn't yeah. live with his parents. He yeah. lives with Ga Gandalf. Yeah, so it wasn't a plot point at all. Okay. No. So even if he was an orphan, it didn't factor into the story other than maybe in his insecurity. That but that was just because he was apprenticing as a pig keeper. Catch boat. Missing parents in three, two, one, go! Sorry, uh... His parents died of the plague, nobody noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Dad with a stash. Nope. Yeah, Dad's no, no stash. Gandalf chance. didn't even have a stash, did he? Yeah. The bard, the, the harp player, didn't even yeah. have a stash. Yeah, Dolm was the only one with a mustache in this one. <laughs> talking animals. Halfway through the movie, I sat up and I said, wait a minute, is this a movie with no talking animals? It could be. <laughs> so but like, it depends on what we qualify some of these creatures as. Like, yeah. what what's Gertie or whatever? Gertie. You are not so very different from a hobbit once. Like, what about, yeah, what about Henwin? Oh, she prophesied. But she was she, acting like a pig. Yeah, yeah she was... but she told the future. Well, yeah. And I almost get the feeling like the only reason the pig could tell the future in a bowl of water was because at some point, maybe some magic spell got cast over the pig. But just think of what we're saying here. Yeah, I know. So really the question is, is Henwen intelligent enough to count as a talking pig? And is Gurgi far enough from humanoid to represent an animal? Three, two, one, go! So, Half points for talking animals. 
unlikely partnership. Huh. Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, what about what's his face and what's her look? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Those Welsh names that are totally yeah. forgettable. Yeah. Like with a Y and a W in it. Yeah. Yeah. What's his lips with two D's and four F's? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wait, wait! What about Gurgi? Gurgi and Taryn, the pig keeper. So initially, okay. Gurgi wanted the apple. Yes. Taryn had, and then Taryn wanted info on the pig, intel on the swine. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't like them. No, they didn't like each other, but they wound up working together well, and saving one another's lives. I, like, I get where you're going with that. It looked like the beginnings of an unlikely partnership. Yeah. So then Henwin screamed and he just ran off, and then Gurgi is like, Get me found you. And we didn't see Gurgi again until later. And then yeah. after that, it wasn't really a sort of unlikely partnership vibe. Okay, let's vote on this one. Three, two, one, go! Alright, half mark it is. Okay, half an unlikely partnership. Hidden Mickey. Yes, lots. Mm -hmm. So hidden Mickeys in water and clouds and flowers. And beer. Also, a hidden Tinkerbell. Yeah. Yeah. She was with all the flying Rice crispy elves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was the fair folk. The fairies. Tinkerbell made yeah. a very skinny little appearance. Oh, no. So so that was a nice little Easter egg. All the rest of the hidden Mickeys were a little kind of drab. Yeah. yeah. You know, yes, okay, water rings, yes, bubbles, okay, we get it. The book intro. Yeah. It was based on, book. on the book, but no mm. book opening. Dark legend telling opening. Yeah. 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 Prologue. And then cut yeah. the bluebirds. Narrated by Galadriel. <laughs> <laughs> no. They were all of them deceased. <laughs> Resurrection. Mm. Yes. Gurgi. It was a resurrection that didn't make any sense. Yeah. Plot -wise. It was like the witches brought him out, and there he was, flopped there, like dead or unconscious or something. After they said, originally, whoever jumps into the cauldron willingly will not die. come out. Yeah. They said not come out. Yeah. yeah. They never said anything about him dying. Yeah, I thought they said won't come out alive. Yeah, yeah but like way. still, even if they won't come out, there's no water, no food. It's just a pot. Yes. If you live in a pot the rest of your life, you're probably going to die. Everyone was like, oh no, Gurgi, he's dead. Yeah. And then Holding he's like, yeah. like, and then they're like, oh, he's alive, all right, it's sunny out now. Yeah, all of a sudden the weather changes. Yeah, yeah. it was a very anticlimactic resurrection. Part of it was you've just spent an hour and ten minutes with these characters, you don't care about them at all. <laughs> so that was part of it, I think. And there's no stirring violin music. Oh, yeah, there's your problem. But yeah. I think it still counts as a resurrection. Yes. And even mm -hmm. if it doesn't, there was the whole army of the undead thing, so. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think they I... were formerly dead and... Well, kind of alive. <laughs> Are zombies really alive? Next time on the Disney Coach. <laughs> right, but that's a yes. Yep. Yeah, that's a yes. It's totally that. Room. What do we got? Our total is seven out of fourteen. The Black Cauldron winds up with seven points, putting it in the middle of the chart, right around with Robin Hood and the Jungle Book. So thanks for joining us on this journey down to Mordor, I mean the Black Cauldron. <laughs> and make sure you subscribe so you can see our new videos coming out every Monday. We've got some links here for other ones that you may want to check out. Like the video, throw some comments down below, and we will see you next time for From the Disney Couch. Bye! Bye! Now can we watch the bonus features? No, when we rent it online, we don't get any bonus features. Bye. We don't even get a DVD case. Sad. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I said so. the trends. Of, it should have been like awkward smooch, 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 smooch. <laughs> smooch, smooch. <laughs>